I think what I find funny about this this day in general is I wasn't originally planning to go to a football game today, but um uh kind of that was a last second thing, so <laughs> uh well, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the owl house, shall we? How is everyone doing today, guys? My name is T Codes, and yeah, so um, uh, what I said in my announcement the other day that I wasn't, I was gonna be out of the house for most of the day. Yep, yeah, that was because I was, I was in, I was in Chicago. I went to a exhibition game be, because I'm leaving for school tomorrow. So nice little last day thing to do before I head back for school wasn't planned really it just came popped up at the last second so I really couldn't avoid it so <laughs> but I was able to watch the f mid season finale of season 2 of the Owl House episode 10 of season 2 episode 29 of the series yesterday's lie I was able to watch it before I left for the game today and honestly throughout the game this episode was all that was on my mind for it because I'm just going to say this is my favorite episode of the season. Yet it's it's such an intriguing episode because there is very little in terms of action. There's very little in terms of um well I okay let me let me start it again because going into this episode you know a lot of people were a lot of people were trying to speculate what this episode was going to be some people thought it was going to be like the not what he seems episode of the owl house and not what he seems is one considered one of the best one of the craziest one of the biggest episodes of Gravity Falls. If you guys haven't seen Gravity Falls, highly recommend you guys check out that show. I mean, I love that show, and I would agree that Not What He Seems is the best episode of that whole entire show, because it was insane, it was chaotic, it was gut-wrenching, it left you just jaw-dropped, really. So everyone, I saw people speculating that's what this episode was gonna be. It wasn't. But you know what? The way this episode is executed, the way this episode works, and just, of course, this whole story that this episode has really makes it feel just as big as not what he seems. I mean, in, in there's very little in, in terms of insanity. There's very little in terms of chaos because... It's simply just understanding who this kind of entity is and Luz trying to... Okay, sorry for that cut. I had to, had to deal with something real quick, but yeah, so this was a very... This was this very simple episode, but just... What it was, what it was telling, what we were introduced, and just the surprise of it too. Because one of the biggest things about this episode was Luce returning to the human realm and coming face to face with this doppelganger that we had pretty much no idea who they were, other than the fact that they were posing as Luce. So. A lot of people were speculating that this was some evil entity sent by someone. Like, so that was one of the major things that people were getting ready to see. Like, seeing Luce go up against this person that a lot of people speculated as well would be, like, the perfect daughter for Camila. So, you know, it was going to be, like, that dynamic between Luce and her mother, like, realizing that her being weird was you know so there was that whole speculation and then we get this 
rug, the rug pulled up from underneath us and we find out, no, that's not who this doppelganger is at all. And it's just, okay. So let's, let's start from the beginning. So it actually starts in the human world where Camila is spending time with Luce, who is actually cleaning out her room, taking out all of the weird stuff, you know, fresh start. She has her own little getup and her own hairstyle. And she's just, you know, she's taking it easy. She just is excited to have a fresh start to life. Even though Camila is a little down because she notices that Luce is still kind of loose, but she isn't the full creative loose. Like, that was the main thing. Like, she sees her throwing out all this stuff that Luce, at a time, loved. So that kind of hurts her. I like that. I like that little detail of her feeling that. And I thought, like, they were going to keep building on it, and then eventually, you know, she would, like, accept that. But, <laughs> back to the doppelganger loose i like the, and you know she goes back into her room and she opens up her closet to find we have the pilot we have a we have the shirt that loose wore in the pilot which was a nice joke and then there's even the baseball bat that the that loose had in the beta version of the owl house so i love the i love the all the different all the callbacks and jokes that they have in this episode but yeah so she opens her closet, but then when she closes it, her closet has mirrors for doors, and in the mirror is loose. And I like that. I really like how they do this episode for how loose doesn't entirely get to the human realm, but she is able to see into it. Like she has her window into the human realm. And so that's explained through how her portal was made. So the portal isn't entirely stable i would stable is probably the best word for it because it is very very uh, what's the best way to describe it it looks like something you well let's see if you had all this junk lying around in your house and you took it all and you just made a portal. This is probably that's probably what it would be. So <laughs> but yeah, so um obviously with it being as unstable as is, as it is, Luce has herself tied into a robe, and then Ida, King, and Hootie are all just gonna wait outside while she goes in. And if anything goes wrong, you know they fall her out. So we just have that basic stuff. But yeah, so she goes in. She goes into the portal, and I I gotta admit, I really like how she can't transfer from the demon realm to the human realm, but she goes into this, like, middle part. Like, there's, like, kind of like this, I guess the best way to say it is, like, this little world between worlds kind of thing. Like, um, from, like, Star Wars Rebels, where she's in this little area between space and time where there are all these little cubes, and so anytime she says, like, a name, like, she first says King, Ida, and Hootie, and then the one of the cubes starts glowing, she grabs it, she looks into it, and she sees them, but then she notices that she's in a mirror, or in, the, in a window, and so she realizes she can only see through reflections, which, that is a really clever design, I really like that idea, I really find it fascinating, and so... That's exactly what happens. So Luce then has to figure out how to see into the human realm. Also, she kind of made a joke. She kind of, um, uh, she was wondering if she could see Hamity. <laughs> so that was, that was kind of interesting. But yeah, so she calls out for her mother. Like, you know, she says her mother's name. And what I really liked about this, um, in terms of keeping a continuity, I think, is how... There are two sides, like it's invert, like it's it's kind of like it has its own gravitational pull. Like you have Luce is here, and then you have what you think looks like a ceiling, and then so Luce 
the cube that Camille had then when she, when Luz said Camille's name is glowing and it looks like it's glowing at the ceiling and so Luz works her way up there but then she the all of a sudden the gravity flips on her and then she lands there like so I like that idea of being like on the t on you have the you have the human realm and the demon realm and they have their own like gravitational pulls to each other it's like that's really cool and I like that a little attention to detail there because you could have easily just had like a human realm cube just like there and it just be like okay so this entire room is it's like no you have one side that's demon realm and one side that's human realm so that's exactly what happens with loose she goes she sees into one of the she sees into the cube and she become, becomes part of her mother's phone which i thought was also very funny the fact that you know usually when we have phones on it's like you see them on the phones but it's actually loose's reflection <laughs> Again, very interesting, but then she sees the evil doppelganger, which, of course, Luce thinks that it's an evil doppelganger, so she freaks out and tries to follow her, but she can't, but then she says, um, calm down, count to five, and then all of a sudden, the, um, the box gl starts glowing again, and Luce sees the her doppelganger, and that's kind of and like from the intro, and then the doppelganger freaks out. And what I um one thing I do like about the doppelganger is that she's voiced by uh, Michaela Dietz. I think that's how you say her last name. Um, she voices Amethyst on in Steven Universe. I I so I was really caught off guard by how. She suddenly, you know, breaks. I mean, obviously, it's her Luce's voice is not her voice, so I guess it makes sense that she had her own voice. But just hearing her voice come out of Luce's body was very creepy. But I like how Luce isn't fully against this doppelganger. Like she defends it when you know Camila um, is outside the room and asks what's going on, and then Luce in the reflection says, "Oh no, sorry, I just saw a spoiler for this. Um, what was it? What was it?" Monster Slayer Academia. I'm pretty sure that's what she said. Um, that's obviously like multiple jokes of like what was it? Like Demon Slayer, My Witch Academia, I think. Which um, I that's partially what the Owl House took, I think, in terms of like animes and stuff. Because you know, My Witch Academia. Never, I've never seen that. In terms of anime, I've seen very little. But I know, I know a lot of different shows. I, I've I've heard of I've heard of a lot of them. I just haven't seen them all. So, don't come at me because of that, please. Pretty please. But um, um, the doppelganger runs off, and it, she they she heads back to the old abandoned house that's oh that's nearby, and she goes in. But then she gets caught in uh, a trap, and so we get we get to see what she actually turns into, and um she. At first, it seems like she's the shapeshifter, but as we find out later, she's actually a basilisk, which, as we learned from season one, they are supposed to be extinct, but apparently, Bellos brought them back, and the reason why is because since these basilisks in this world take the magic in order to make their own energy, it would make sense that Bellos is interested in that, because we know Bellos seemingly can't do magic his own like naturally so he has to find an alternative solution so he probably brought these basilisks back in order to use their magic in order to figure out how to drain magic so they can use it as as their own so this basilisk who is name who her she her name was number five but she calls herself v which is Again, very clever because the Roman numeral for five, for the for the number five is a V. So nice little detail there. But so we get to see that the basilisk is a shapeshifter. So that's how she took the form of loose. You know, she just is able to shapeshift. So the reason why um, V was able to get to the human realm and pose as loose is because the day loose showed up in the demon realm. She was there when she saw Luz at Edith's stand, and so she saw it as an opportunity to slip into the human realm and take Luz's form. And when she was there, you know, she meets she met Camila, and then Camila actually came back from her ship because she got the day off and offered to drive Luz, Luz to camp. So that's how V became Luz, went to camp, and actually started 
living in the human realm and so all she wa and really all she wanted was to have her own life after living who knows how long in it behind bars just being this experiment to bellow so you feel for her in this episode you really do feel for her in this episode it's such a emotional thing and it's like it's it's crazy because again everyone heading into this episode was getting ready to hate whoever this doppelganger loose was and then it's just like you never know it's like dana dana and crew hats off to you for <laughs> subverting everyone's expectations on this so but um yeah so loose um obviously feeling bad for her wants to help her figure this out while also uh, also keeping her cover as loose as um her as her doppelganger because unfortunately after like i said after she got caught in the trap she turned back into her original form and then when she tried to turn back into the loose she didn't turn fully turn back like so part of her her ears are still there her eyes haven't changed color and part of her skin is still basilisk form so she has to find magic to consume in order to fully change back and so loose talks about how they should just well because since Ida has frequently traveled to the human realm there's got to be somewhere somewhere nearby that she's probably dumped something magical so there must be something there and so we get to see loose's hometown i'm guessing of gravesfield which is very interesting name and a lot of interesting things here because uh one we see a statue that has two people one that looks like philip i think and the other one who knows but then we get to see another picture of them and one of them is holding a cardinal which i'm guessing is a cardinal palisman which only just adds more and more layers to the oh boy <laughs> but um obviously the main objective is finding something magical so that we can eat it and fully take form of loose again and so she goes she first goes to this coffee shop that Ida was banned from or um excuse me Mar uh, Marilyn <laughs> Marilyn which um is what her um I'm guessing e which is Ida's um human alias is I and anyone who knows Gravity Falls stuff and knows like all the stuff between Grunkle Stan, like, you know, um, Grunkle Stan has a divorced wife, and her name was Marilyn. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I got a laugh out of that. I'm like, oh my god, they actually did that. But yeah, unfortunately, there aren't any, um, there isn't any magic there on the, um, V wanted to eat talking rats, which was a very creepy scene as well, but she, no, she doesn't. She runs off into the park where she meets her friends from camp at first, and, I like this. I like this scene beforehand where she actually goes up to talk to them. Loose is talking with her for uh, the little for a mirror, and she's like telling V, "Okay, don't worry. Okay, don't freak out. Then you know, don't freak out. You gotta have a plan when you're talking to high schoolers. You gotta think of all your skaters. Like, so I like how Loose is just trying to plan everything out while V is just like, "Oh no, 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 no. They're they're cool. You know, it's like for V, it's so natural to talk with people, whereas for Loose, you know, she especially for humans." It's very complicated because, as we knew beforehand, Luce didn't really, never really had a human friend. So, for her to actually try and observe the situation and come up with a plan is very interesting. And so, for V, again, supernatural. She just goes up to them and talks to them. And they, like I said before, they were all they all went to camp together. And so, there's this little fun scene because she goes up to them because they're holding. Um, cards from Hexus Hold'em, which is another great callback to Hootie's movie for season one with uh, Hootie's movie Hassle, because Lou said Ida got rid of the cards and she wondered where she got rid of them, so Ida went to the human realm and just dumped them. So, um, but yeah, so Lou's um, V's friends are playing with them, and one of them, voiced by Gray Griffin, doing all I can say is her Azula version um voice <laughs> you're running from your past from a previous life that was not kind to you however the guilt and fear you carry will eventually catch you in a self-fulfilling prophecy that you won't be able to escape from <laughs> you're gonna need some bath bombs girl 
yeah, that was a creepy scene, but um, uh, I, I liked it this time because, again, it kind of matched with V's backstory with, you know, her having to run away because, you know, she spent all of her time behind bars, and so she was kind of terrified of her past. And so, luckily for her, she's able to get out because her friends tell her where they got the cards so that she goes to this, um, gra the Gravesfield Museum where... They have this, um, the curator who is voiced by Roger Craig Smith, you know, he's there and I kind of, I, I, at first I liked him because he, you know, he comes in, you know, he's super nice and then he even like knows why V's there. He, he, you know, he's like, you're here for those weird cars, right? And she, V's like, how'd you know? And she's like, everyone, not, she's like, all these, te all the teens in town have been asking about it. So I figured, so, you know, he seems super generous and he's, you know, just treating her like a normal kid and just letting her be. But obviously V's letting the her kind of like the the fortune thing get to her and so Luce tries to sympathize with her but then that but that has Luce saying how she knows what it feels like to run away and, and um uh yeah run away isn't yeah it's it's complicated with that because on one hand Luce had the satisfaction of knowing that she could go back any time to the human realm originally that was until she destroyed the portal in the end of season one and then it was like okay i have to get back it wasn't like amphibia case where she was stuck there the whole time and she was doing everything in her power to get back she chose to stay there that whole first season so there is that sad there is that fact and v throws it back at her she's like saying you had you had a life here, you had a mom that loved you, you had it good, and yet you still chose to run away from that. Of course, that isn't the whole story with Luce. We know why Luce chose to stay on the demon realm, because, you know, she wanted to find him, because, you know, because she was alone. She didn't have, you know, she didn't have any friends. She felt like she was an outcast. She felt like fantasy was her escape and so she literally thought being in the demon realm would be a real escape from reality but in reality it wasn't entirely true i mean if you think about it you know if loose loose even though she didn't go to camp she still has learned a lot and she's made new friends she's grown a lot too just the fact that it's in this demon realm with magic and not a summer camp where you get to Bounce checkbooks. Again, very weird, but um, <laughs> um, they have that moment with the V and Luce, and then but then V is able to smell some magic nearby, so she goes into the curator's office where she finds more Hexus Holden cards, but they do have magic in them. But they do also find that this curator is um, uh, how do I put this um, um. <laughs> Ronaldo, is that one of the monster people you've been hunting? Hello. <gasps> you snake people. You know, I like the idea that you have a voice actress from Steven Universe in this episode, but I don't like the fact that you have someone who feels like a character from Steven Universe a lot of people hate. Yeah, this episode got really intense. Uh, <laughs> so, the curator traps um, V and... He thinks, and he and he's been searching for demons and witches for a while because he had an encounter with Ida. So he's this whole, and he also has a training wand. And at first, I'm like thinking, how does he not know how to use it? But then at the same time, I'm like thinking, okay, of, wait, of course he doesn't know how to use it because he doesn't know that you have to make a circle. He just thinks it's like say a magic spell and it happens or something. It's like no, you have to make a circle for it to happen. So it makes sense that he wouldn't know how to do that. He's very idiotic <laughs> i mean this is a guy who on one of his walls says he's a member of the flat earth society so it's like <laughs> but yeah unfortunately for v she's captured and so loose has to do like a basically the last resort thing and she she has to go to her mother 
and it's on the phone, so Kamuma thinks Luz is calling her, and so Luz tries to tell her everything, but Camille at first thinks this was all just some elaborate game, and that she's just gonna play along, and I did like when she said, I'm glad you're being creative again, like, she's, like, happy to see that Luz is letting her creative side out, but, um, <laughs> yeah, so it gets a little interesting at the, um, uh, museum because, you know, Camille confronts the curator and the curator thinks, you know, she's from the government because Camille says, oh, I heard you had a demon here, you know? And so everything seems like it's just an act until she actually sees V in her basilisk form. And that's when she realizes Luce was telling the truth and this is all real. And so at first, you know, she's freaking out, but then Luce tells her, you know, that V is scared and she is a super nice person and that she has and then she needs her help. And so I really liked how Camila in that moment trusted Luz about this and was comforting V and even and, and eventually, you know, she stands up to the curator and beats the <laughs> I would assume beats the crap out of him because <laughs> as we know from Dana's um uh, two truths and a lie. Really, in reality, it's not two truths and a lie. It was three truths because, yeah, Camila did beat the crap out of someone in this episode. <laughs> but, yeah, so she saves V and they go home. But luckily for them, it's raining. And so um, then when Camila leaves the lights on of her, the headlights on of her car, Luce is able to become like a full body hologram, I guess. I mean, best way to describe it in the rain. And so she's able to see her mother at least in terms of, like, full-on body instead of, like, in the screen. And so Camila, of course, she's... Luce thinks, you know, Camila has been super cool about it, but then Camila starts breaking down. You know, she's so scared of everything. She's so scared because now she knows that Luce has been in this demon realm. Their magic's real. All of this. And she... But then she's super happy to see that Luce has grown. Like I said, she's grown. She's learn so much but then Luce kind of makes Luce Luce ruins the moment by saying you know she's so happy that she stayed there and then of course that's when Camille realizes that Luce didn't get stuck there by accident she chose to stay there and then she got stuck so that's when Camille is like wait you chose to stay there and she's still then she starts questioning you know she gets mad at Luce saying like did you think you can live out this witch fantasy? But then she starts questioning herself. Like she's like, "Did you leave? Did you? Were you really that determined to get away? Were you really that determined to get away from me?" And so it's like all of a sudden you have Luce freaking out because you know she doesn't. She it's not her mother's fault. She know you know she tries to tell her that she tries to say it's not her mom's fault, but unfortunately for her, the portal starts collapsing. So she's being pulled back, and of course, perfect timing, right? So as she's being pulled back, you know, she's trying to tell her mom it's not her fault and that she's going to do everything she can to get back to her. But then Camila says, when you get back, promise me you'll stay. I promise things will be different. And of course, Luce at first doesn't say anything, but then she says she promises. And it's like, you know, that's a, that's a promise that may or may not be broken because... Man, that final scene was harsh, man. <laughs> but yeah, so Luce gets pulled back through the portal, which unfortunately collapses, so she has to rebuild another one, but she has a moment with King Hoodie and Ida and promise and you know, they ask her what happened. Did they you know, is everything okay? And Luce kind of lies and says, Oh yeah, I even saw my mom and she's excited to meet you guys and you know all that, but yeah. Um, oh yeah, and forgot to mention, as for V, um, Camila says she can stay with her as long as she she needs to, so I like that. I like how V is gonna stay with Camila, and I hope we get to see more of them. I really like the dynamic that they had, and I wonder what the dynamic's gonna be like now that Camila knows that V isn't loose. <laughs> I imagine it's still gonna be good, but yeah. Yeah, this episode, man, it was...
this episode hit. <laughs> it hit hard. I, it was, it, yeah, again, it's like, th there was very little in terms of chaos, action, insanity. It was just simply this, these, this, this girl, you know, these two, this creature, this creature who was trying to live a new life finds the real, finds the person she's been impo impersonating the whole time and trying to work with each other. You know, there's really just a lot of conversations in this episode and there were a lot of good conversations. And of course the ending with loose and loose with their mother, you know, you know, you know, that she'll, her mother knows the truth. She knows where she's been. She knows all of that. But there is that tearjerker of the fact that now, Camila thinks Luce did this on purpose because of her, and you have Luce feeling super guilty about it. And then, of course, you have Camila again saying that when Luce gets back, she promised that she would stay. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, man, so... But... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a really good episode, and I just... I mean, I really, I mean, I'm a, I'm really into dialogue heavy episodes and this really was a dialogue heavy episode. There was not a lot of time. There was not a lot of moments where it, you just let the, you just let the scene sink in. It was really, you know, you just have talking, you have them talking about hard facts about this, like backstory with V, you know, the, the, the chemistry between Luce and V, and obviously the relationship between Luce and her mother, and you have this curator who, for the most part, you know, he knows about the demon realm, but he doesn't know the whole facts, he doesn't know all the facts, there was that creepy thing about it, but, yeah, man, this episode, oh my god, I'm sorry, I'm starting to think about that final scene, and I'm gonna, oh, I'm probably, uh, I don't want to, no, no, don't, don't tear up, don't tear up, <laughs> I'm sorry, it hit, it hit, man. I mean, it's... Rarely does scenes hit me hard. Like, not a lot of scenes do that. Like I said back in season one, like that outro when it played in, after the season one finale hit. So for me, it's this scene that hits. Because, I mean, we're going on... This is our hiatus now. We're on a hiatus for the Owl House. So we're left with this whole final moment with just oh man yeah oh man I got I can't I'm sorry I, I really I really love this episode it's it was really it's a really great way to cap off the first half of this season because it shows how far we've come and it shows how far we have yet to go because Lou still needs to find a way to make a functioning portal to get back to the human realm. We've just been introduced to a new, to more pieces to the puzzle. Which only makes the puzzle bigger because you have m more facts. Like, it's like you had the curator talk about how two people were sent to the demon realm. When all in the demon realm, they said there was only one person. So it's like, who's the second person? Are they, you know, it's like, what the heck is going on with all of this? So, yeah. Whenever season, whenever the second half of season two comes out, you know, we're going to be on it. But for now, we're left with this, so... I think, I think this is a good way to end this video. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked it, leave a like. If you want to leave a comment, leave a comment. And if you want to subscribe, subscribe. You don't have to. I'm just saying. Thank you all for watching. And we'll see you in the next video.